This is an example of implantation of the new Vividi lens by Alcon. Here we're using a one millimeter diamond blade to create our paracentesis wound. Um, I like to inject preservative-free lidocaine on all my cases. It just helps the patient with comfort during the entire procedure, and it doesn't take a whole lot of time to do. Um, I specifically use Alcon's Viscoat as my dispersive viscoelastic for all my cases. Um, I think it does a great job of protecting the corneal endothelium, um, and it's a great product, and it comes in that duo visc container where you actually get both it and ProVisc. I create a 2.2 millimeter keratome using a metallic blade. I prefer the metallic over the diamond for these just because I find the diamond can sometimes cut a little bit too quickly, and any lateral movement will expand that wound, which I'm not looking for. I start my capsulotomy with a bent 30 gauge um, TB needle. I just do that to create that initial incision. I pull downwards towards myself and then rotate and just create that flap. I like to finish um, with a pair of micro utratas. Um, I find these things just make a cleaner um, rexus for myself and usually go a lot quicker than using or continuing to use that um, bent TB needle. For my hydro dissection, I really like the chain cannula. Um, I like to go either superior or inferior inject until I, until I see a nice fluid wave, then drop to the opposite side of where that fluid wave went um, and push down and over, and usually that will release the lens. Here we didn't see that. A um, little bit of prolapse of the iris right there. So we're going to grab a cyclodialysis spatula and just lift that out of the wound using the para incision. Um, I find that to be the cleanest way to do this. If you're trying to jam that thing back in using any other device, all you do is create a lot of iris trauma. So here I am bringing in um, our FACO handpiece. So the way I like to kind of work on most of my cataracts is I like to create this central groove and kind of do more of a stop and chop technique. So here I just like to debulk um, the anterior aspect of that cataract. Then I create that central groove right here. I use a Connor wand as my secondary because it has a nice kind of dull bulbous tip and I don't have to worry about it I'm kind of ripping through the capsule. There we're cracking that cataract in half. Then I'm going to slip the Connor wand behind the cataract and I'm going to actually pull up and against the FACO tip and use that to create kind of an anterior chopping um, motion. I like doing that because I think it spares the zonules a lot more than doing um, a chopping motion where you're actually pushing down on the lens. Um, I also find that that Connor wand slips nicely in between um, the lens and the bag, and there's really a low, low, low chance of um, punching through the posterior capsule and creating a rent. I've actually never actually had that problem. Um, I think as long as you're taking your time and being careful, this is an extremely um, easy and effective technique. And as you can see here, each quadrant, I dip that Connor wand underneath um, that lens and pull it up to myself, and I'm not having to dive down with the FACO handpiece and get it kind of into the danger zone. I like to keep that FACO handpiece right at the iris plane for the entire case, um, and this technique lets me do that. We're getting the IA handpiece set up at this time. We're going to chase all that cortical material. Um, I like to kind of start laterally and then work my way around and finish with the subincisional area last. I find that if you loosen up everything else or work on everything else first, it makes that subincisional cortex a whole lot easier to remove. Um, sometimes, though, independent of what you do, the cortex can just be extremely sticky and it just doesn't want to come off. And I think that this is one of those cases where that sub-incisional or this lateral um, leftover cortex here becomes kind of a pain because it just doesn't want to release. But we'll see here. Here you can see we only really have kind of that sub-incisional area left over, a little bit laterally there. We're kind of cleaning it up just to make sure everything looks good. Again, that kind of sub-incisional area is sitting there. You just take your time if it's real sticky. Don't rush it. The last thing you want to do is get to this part of the case and then um, tear the posterior capsule. So as you can see, I'm just chasing that last little bit of cortex there. It's going to come up nicely, and there it is. Um, I preferably don't polish anything. Um, I think that polishing the posterior capsule just puts yourself at risk when it's not needed. 
that's what our YAG lasers are for, and so I don't really polish anybody at all. If I um, see a PCO, it's much easier, much more controlled just to YAG that. And that was our dispersive um, provis going in. Here, I find that I like to widen my incisions to a 2-4. I find these Vividi lenses, because of that central donut, are a little bit thicker than the majority of other, than the kind of classical SN lenses. And so I do widen my incision, so this lens will very easily um, slide inside of the eye. Um, probably not needed. It's just a technique that I find that makes it a lot easier to get that lens in. I'm going to then center it up. We're going to make sure this lens creates a 2. Um, just remember, you're good to go if it's a 2. And if you see an S, you better stop, stupid. Um, so the lens is nice and centered there. I'm going to now bring in my IA handpiece. Um, the wound around that handpiece is now a little bit loose because I enlarge it from a 2.2 to a 2.4, but that doesn't really um, make the viscoelastic removal any more difficult. And so here we're just making sure we get all this viscoelastic out. My goal is to make sure that we don't have an IOP spike day one. We're going to make sure the lens is nice and centered. It looks really good right here. You can see that central donut there. And at this point, we're just going to hydrate the wounds um, with BSS, make sure we don't have any leaks, and we are done. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch the video.